Question six on chapter six, and we've got a bit of a uh, problem here. First of all, there's, there's loads of it. These are nasty questions. Now, I'm going to assume that you've can got access to solution banks if you are at the stage where you're looking at these videos, then you've exhausted everything you can do. I'm not going to uh, look at the solution banks and, and work things through. That means that what I am going to do is I'm going to do these fresh. I've, I've not looked at them before uh, pressing record on the video, so I have no idea how I'm going to do these, and I'll try and talk you through my thought process. Now, the disadvantage is... Uh, I might get it wrong. I might do it in an inefficient way. If I get to an answer and it's a complicated way, then feel free to have a look at the solution bank and find a more uh, a useful way. But the way we should think about this is it doesn't matter what the answer to these particular questions is. How do you build up the skills that you need so that you can solve this kind of question, uh, these triggered entity sorts of questions, when you meet them in future, when you see them on an exam? Okay. <coughs> so... The first thing is, the the best practice you can get with these is to try them, is to try doing them yourself. So basically I'm saying, if, if, at all, if at all possible, stop this video, try it again. If you have come to the end of your tether, if you've tried it, you've left it for a few hours, you've tried it again, you really cannot come up with a solution. Then, at that point, maybe this video will help, but it will be better um, if you haven't tried this yet to try and uh, speak to... A, a classmate or a teacher and see if they can talk you through the, the problem. Now, the reason I'm making this video is that I've not had chance to do that with my uh, class this year. So, you you know, we, this, this is the, the second best thing we can do. Um, the other thing is, look at the, uh, the, well, the first thing, let's start with part A. Um, look at the triggered entity before you start. And what can you do? What are all the options? Think about all the options Think about the left-hand side, think about the right-hand side. It's usually a good idea to start with the most complicated side first and uh, and then work from there and try and sort of treat it as a simplifying question. You're simplifying the expression, but you know what you're heading for, okay? <clears throat> Sometimes it's not obvious which side is the more complicated side. So in this case, I would say this side looks more complicated, so we'll start here. Um, but even if you've decided where you're starting, look at both sides and think about where you can get to. So here, I could expand the brackets. So fine, that'll be all right. When I do expand the brackets, though, what's going to happen? Well, uh, tan is sine over cos and cot is cos over sine. So the tan times the cos, something will cancel out there. The cos will cancel out and that'll leave us with the sine. And the cot times the sine, something will cancel out and that'll leave us with the cos. So that's um, perhaps looking helpful, I'm not sure. Now the sec and cosec, well that's 1 over cos and that's 1 over sine. So if I did think about this side, um, this is going to be something like sine theta cos plus cos theta over sine cos, isn't it? Sine theta cos theta. So that, that's, where I, that's what's what would happen on this side. I can't see how that's going to help with the other side, but there we go. Um, what else could I do? Tan links to a sec. There's a there's a, a identity involving sec squared and tan squared. Cot links to a cosec, so that doesn't seem to be helpful. Um, and there's uh, there's you know nothing else I can particularly see here. So we've done our initial thinking. Now, if we set off with one idea in mind, we've got one plan, which is let's expand these brackets and see what happens. If that doesn't work, maybe we can go back and use one of those other ideas. Maybe we can use an identity or something. Now, in this case. There does seem to be only one plan, doesn't there? There doesn't, there doesn't seem to be, you know, it's not like we've got an option. The idea that tan, tan squared and cos and sec squared are linked in a in an identity, well, it's obviously not going to be that. Why would we want to introduce sec squareds at this point? It doesn't seem very promising. In other um, triggered entities, it might be worth thinking of these uh, possibilities because maybe you're actually going to use a different one. Okay, so maybe there are two sensible starting routes. You try one, doesn't work, you've got another one to try. So let's try this. Tan times sine. Um, so I could write that as sine tan, or I could write that as sine squared over cos. Um, and this is where that initial inspection has helped. I know that I had a, a fraction with a sine cos as a denominator here, so I think I am going to write that as sine squared theta over cos. Um, because although normally I might want to avoid fractions, if I've got fractions, it might help me in this case. Tan times cos is going to be, well, tan is sine over cos, so tan times cos is going to be a sine. Cot times sine is going to be a cos, because cot is sine over cos, uh, sorry, cot is cos over sine, 
times by sine we've got a cos. Cot times cos is cos squared theta over uh, sine theta. Um, so what have we got here? We've got um, we've got uh, yeah. So we've we've got some algebraic fractions. Let's deal with them. The denominator is going to have to be sine cos. That's the lowest common denominator. So here I've times the top and bottom by a sine, so I'm going to have a sine cubed theta here. Here I've times by uh, sine cos, so I'm going to get sine squared cos theta. Looking, looking nasty, but there we go. Here I've times the top and bottom by um, sine cos, so I'm going to get a cos squared sine. And here I've times the top and bottom by cos, so I'm going to get a cos cubed. Um, so, my common denominator is sine cos. Um, let's see, I can take out a... Ah, okay. So if I take sine squared out of the first two, I get sine theta cos theta. If I take cos squared out of the next two, I get um, sine theta plus cos theta. Okay, um, and then this is a, um, if I factorize this out, so I, I write this as sine theta plus cos theta times sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, all divided by sine theta cos theta. Okay, so um, this term, th this part of the terms has been factorized out the front. Um, and if you're not happy with that, well, just expand these brackets back out and you'll see that that's where we get to. Um, so not a particularly neat way of doing it, but look from there, look, the sine squared plus cos squared equals one. So we can ignore that, something times one. And then this, uh, we can split up into sine over sine cos and cos over sine cos, which turns out to be 1 over sine plus 1 over cos. So, so basically, I'm recognising this from that initial bit of thinking that I did. So all I need to do now is write down that and write down that and then write down that and there's the end of the question. Perhaps not the neatest way of doing it. Maybe there's a quicker way in the, in the solution bank, but there's a solution. Um, okay, so... Part 2, part B... Uh, we have cosec. Now, I won't go through all that initial waffle again. Let's just try it. It looks to me like the left-hand side is the more complicated. Um, <clears throat> but sec squared, I know there's a, uh, an identity with a tan, so um, I'm going to work that one out. Now, the way I do this is like this. Cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. If I want to make a tan, I'm, I'm going to have to divide through by cos squared. So that's 1 plus tan squared equals sec squared. So I never remember this one. I always have to work it out from that, but it only takes a second. So sec squared, I could change into a 1 plus tan squared. So if I get 1 plus tan squared on this side, I know I'm all right. And also, if, if I find tan squareds, then that's perhaps promising. Cosec is 1 over sine, and I've got a sine here. Um, it's a little bit worrying that cosec is 1 over sine, so I've got 1 over sine here, 1 over sine here. Um, but, well, maybe we'll have to cope with that. Um, if I turn the cosecs into 1 over sine, then I could maybe do something with uh, simplifying the bottom and then simplifying the top, do it as a, as a fraction division. And I can't see anything else helpful, so we'll start from there. Let's start with the left-hand side. The top is 1 over sine x. The bottom is 1 over sine x minus sine x. Um, I'm going to try and sort out that denominator. Um, it's going to be 1 minus sine squared all over sine when I just do algebraic fractions. Um, and now uh, this is the top divided by the bottom, so that is 1 over sine times by sine x over 1 minus sine squared. And now I'm feeling a bit more confident. I've got the sine cancels with the sine. I get 1 over 1 minus sine squared, which is 1 over cos squared 
which is sec squared. So again, that thinking about the tan squared didn't actually help me, but on another example it might do. Okay, um, now part C. <coughs> we have 1 minus sine times 1 plus cosec. So as I'm looking at that, I'm thinking sine is 1 over cosec. So when I expand these brackets out, and I'm also looking at it now thinking, ah, difference of two squares. It's not actually difference of two squares, but it sort of feels like one, doesn't it? Look, we've got a, a 1 and a 1 and a minus and a plus. So, it, you know, if, if it, it looks sort of a bit different to two squares E. Um, it isn't a difference of two squares, but maybe when I expand it out, something neat will happen. So it's really tempting me to expand that out, but I'm going to follow my own advice. Before I do anything, I'm going to look at everything I can see and see what I can find out. I've got a cot, cot, uh, cos cot, well, and I'm going to remember that cot is cos over sine, so it's cos squared over sine is what I've got on this side. So if I approach something that looks like that, then that will be good. Um, and that's as much as I can see. So let's expand the brackets out. 1 plus cosec minus sine minus sine cosec. Well, sine times cosec is 1, isn't it? Uh, because cosec is 1 over sine. So the left-hand side turns into this. The 1 and the 1 cancel out, so I've got a cosec minus sine. And the only thing I can think of to do here is to do this. Um, not looking incredibly promising, but let's see what happens. 1 minus sine squared over sine. Ah, there we go. 1 minus sine squared is cos squared over sine, which is cos x over sine x times cos x, which is cot x cos x. So there we go. Wasn't looking promising, but we got there in the end. That was part C. So part D. Carrying on with part D, <coughs> now you'll notice there's an edit just there, and that's because uh, when I did part D, I actually got it completely wrong. Now, I'm going to put up another video with me getting it wrong here, um, because it's quite helpful sometimes to see the thinking. Often when you're reading an answer in a textbook, it appears as though you should have been able to see stage one, then stage two, then stage three, and they should all be obvious, and they're really not. Um, and that's the point of me kind of going through these things on, on videos, uh, not having looked at them before. I haven't worked out the answers usually. Um, I'm trying to show you my thought process as we go. Um, so you can see my thought process of me getting it completely wrong if, you, if you're interested in seeing that on a different video. The thoughts of getting it wrong are the things that showed me the correct way to do it though. So if you're interested in seeing all this mess and how it all goes wrong and how I must have made an algebraic slip up, and you know, firstly I had the wrong method, then I had an algebraic slip up. But all of that work led me to the correct method. So if you're finding the same, if you're finding you're getting them wrong a lot, that is the, the road to getting it right, is through getting it wrong a lot. So <clears throat> uh, I'm going to look at it like this for part D. Cot x divided by cosec x minus 1. I'm just going to take that fraction to start with, and I'm going to write it out uh, in this way. Now, I wouldn't have seen that this was the simplest thing to do. I th I'm reasonably certain that this is a fairly efficient method now. Um, uh, but I wouldn't have seen that unless it was, uh, uh, apart from the fact that I, I'd spent all the time getting it wrong, and now I know that this is the efficient method. So um, why, would, why would I do it this way? Well, because I know it works, having just spent some time working that out. So um, that I can rewrite as this, just using normal... Uh, rules of fractions, if I've got a fraction divided by something, um, you know, think about it as a half divided by four um, is the same as a half times a quarter. So you uh, can times the denominator by the thing you're dividing by, okay? Um, so that is... Um, oh, I've just seen another... Th well, I'm, I'm going to stick with the route that I know works, but I've just seen another way that, that might work even better. Oh yes. Well, let's let, let's let's um. I'll show you both. So, if you're interested in two methods, there will be two methods here. But uh, this is this is the first one that I came up with. Cos uh, expand the bottom out. Sine times cosec is one. Sine times minus one is minus sine. And then. Uh, 
Ah, sorry. The, the, the other thing that I said I'd just seen, I think actually doesn't work. Um, so that, that fraction there becomes that fraction there. And then we had, uh, so the initial statement that we have in the question, we can write out like this. We've got this fraction to deal with as well. So if we take this, <coughs> 1 minus sine, 1 plus sine. So I'm going to make uh, times this fraction by 1 plus sine. I'm going to times this fraction by 1 minus sine. Um, and then I've got 1 minus sine squared on the bottom. It's a difference of two squares for my common denominator. And I'm going to write 1 minus sine squared as cos squared straight away. Okay. Um, cos x times 1 minus 1 plus sine minus 1 minus sine on the top and the bottom becomes cos x squared. That leaves me with the cos x and the cos x squared will cancel out and I just get a cos x on the bottom. 1 minus this one sin x minus times a minus is a plus so that's 2 sin x on the top which is 2 tan x. Um, I'm going to leave part d there uh, because the, the thing that I mentioned halfway through of thinking I've got a clever way of doing it, I just pa paused the video and the, the alternative method that I thought of as I was writing the solution out didn't actually help. Okay, so we'll go straight on to part E um, and we're looking at this cosec theta minus 1 plus oh, 1 over cosec theta plus one. Now as I'm writing that out, I'm looking at oh, cosec minus one, cosec plus one, that looks like a difference of two squares. So it's really asking to be put together as a common denominator of cosec squared minus one. Uh, that might well help us. Um, what have we got on the right hand side? Two sec theta tan theta. Uh, if you've done the integration chapter, then you, you know, sec tan will ring a bell, but I don't think it's going to help us with simplifying. Um, and I know that sec is linked to tan by a, a, an identity involving sec squared and tan squared, but um, really there's a big hint here with the cosec minus one and the cosec plus one, so I'm going to go for that. I'm going to take this fraction and times by cosec theta plus one. I'm going to take this fraction and times by cosec theta minus one. Then the bottom of this fraction will be cosec minus one times cosec plus one. Bottom of this fraction will be cosec minus one times cosec plus one. So that's going to be cosec squared theta minus one. Um, and that gives us uh, the minus one and the plus one cancel out on the top. I've got two cosec over um, cosec minus one, cosec squared. Um, actually, uh, now is there a quick way of doing this? I think um, what I'm thinking is that cosec is one over sine. So I could write 1 over sine on the top, I could write this is 1 over sine squared, and then I could deal with the algebraic fractions on the top and, and work that way. And that will get me to the answer, actually. But um, le let me just check, is there a quicker way? I know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Um, so if I divide through by sine, I get 1 plus cot squared theta equals cosec squared theta. So cosec squared minus 1 is cot squared. So let's try this way. 2 cosec theta over um, cosec squared minus 1 is cot squared. Um, well this is sort of looking promising isn't it? So um, <clears throat> cot squared, well if I write 2 cosec as 2 times 1 over sine and 1 over cot squared, I can write as a tan squared, can't I? Um, and then this is going to be, well, tan squared is sine squared. Uh, we're there, I think. We just need to do a little bit of writing to prove it. The sine squared cancels with the sine. So I end up, oh dear, I end up with sine over cos, which is tan, <laughs> I've lost my sec. Oh, there we go, that, that should have been sine squared over cos squared. Um, so I end up with 2 sine theta over cos squared theta, which is 2 times 1 over cos 
times sine over cos, which is the same as the thing we were looking for. Brilliant. Okay, so moving straight on to f, um, <clears throat> what are we looking at? I'm looking at uh, a very nasty looking left hand side and a nice-ish looking right hand side. So I'm going to start, I think, by trying to simplify the left hand side. And as I'm copying it down, I'm thinking, okay, I've got a sec minus tan and I've got a sec plus tan. So again, difference of two squares, right? So that's almost certainly going to be my first stage is to, is to um, uh, expand those brackets on the top. And I've got one plus tan squared on the bottom. And a cos squared is what I'm aiming for. Okay, so a cos squared is the same as a one minus sine squared. A one plus tan squared, um, that I think, um, if you remember the sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. So if I divide everything through by sine, uh, through by cos squared, sorry, I get tan squared theta plus one equals one over sec squared. So tan squared plus one is sec squared. So that might be helpful. Um, Let's see. I'm going to expand the brackets on the top and I'm going to get sec squared minus tan squared. Um, 1 plus tan squared on the bottom is going to give me a sec squared. I think I'll take that. Um, and again, I'm looking, I'm heading for a cos squared. All right, so um, <clears throat> I can see a possible way forward here, which would be uh, to realize that sec squared is 1 over cos squared. So the top is 1 over cos squared minus sine squared over cos squared. So, well, right, let me write it down. So uh, 1 over cos squared theta minus sine squared over cos squared theta over... Um, I'm going to leave the bottom as a sec squared at the moment. Am I? No, I'm not. Um, 1 over cos squared theta for the bottom of my fraction which is 1 minus sine squared all over cos squared all over 1 uh, and uh, sorry all over 1 over cos squared uh, and then the denominator is cos squared the denominator is cos squared for the, the for the numerator here the denominator here they're both fractions and they've both got a denominator of cos squared so in other words um, this is 1 minus sine squared if you need to then think think of this as this fraction divided by this one. So flip this one upside down and times. One minus sine squared is what we've got, which is of course cos squared theta. So it looked horrible, but not too bad for part F. There we are, all done.